G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope these exercises prove useful for you. They're actually a very good way to fast track drawing improvement because they let us focus on a particular element of drawing which is hugely important for the way our drawings look overall. And if architecture isn't what you draw, then you can certainly look at your preferred drawing subjects and create your own drawing exercises that give you intense practice at the sorts of lines you need to draw for your subjects. These sorts of exercises are a great thing to doodle away with when you're watching television or waiting at the doctors. And if you haven't hit subscribe, why don't you hit subscribe now and notifications while I get back to some more drawing exercises. If we draw, we draw a lot of lines. Line drawing practice is a great technique for fast tracking our drawing improvement because it focuses time and effort on one of the most important elements of our drawing. We don't even need anything to draw. It helps us to stop drawing hairy lines, wobbly lines, crooked lines, and to replace them with drawing clean and crisp lines every time. So we'll quickly cover some line drawing basics to make sure when we draw our lines, they're nice and clean and crisp and straight. And I'll be doing these demos using pen. But if you don't draw in ink, then these are just as good as pencil drawing exercises. But don't bother erasing mistakes. It's not worth the time. Put that time into doing some more exercises. Let's start. First things first, not what lines to draw, but how to draw a line. It's important that we hold the pen firmly, but loosely. We're not clenching it in our fingertips. And when we draw, we move our whole arm we should feel the drawing movement from our shoulder. The important thing is not to go too slowly. When we start to go slowly, every little shake and tremor that we have gets recorded like a seismograph line. What we want is a nice smooth movement. Not pressing too hard is part of how we achieve that. Whichever direction we draw our line from. One of the ways to know that we're drawing from our fingers and not from our arm is that we can feel ourselves resting on the paper. What this causes is that as we draw a line, we tend to pivot on the point of contact with the paper and pivoting will create a slightly curved line. Our first exercise is simple, drawing lots of short parallel lines. This lets us practice gliding our hand smoothly on the paper as we use our whole arm. It lets us practice having a fast movement, keeping a light touch on the paper. And it's the best way to eliminate any habit we have of drawing hairy lines. And by hairy lines, I mean lines that are really a series of lines. These usually come from a lack of confidence to draw a smooth straight line. And the reason we're drawing them parallel is because in many drawings, there are parallel lines in this rooftop scene. The construction of the roof means that we have all these parallel lines at different angles that we need to draw. In this Vienna Street scene, again, we see lots of vertical lines parallel to each other in all different parts of our drawing. And we should practice these lines, not just in one direction, but in all directions and at all angles. And not just from left to right, but also from right to left and up to down or down to up. Because often one direction is actually easier for us than another direction, often depending whether we're left or right handed. And it's good for us to work out what works most easily for us. This next exercise is to place a dot on our paper and to draw a line that ends at the dot. This is a great skill to develop because in drawing, we often have to end a line at a certain place that has no other drawing around it to guide us. I often actually put a dot on my paper where I want the line to end. Practicing doing this, especially with some quite long lines, is a very helpful exercise. It's important not to slow down too much as we approach our dot. That will often produce a heavier line 
because the longer our pen is in contact with the paper, often the more ink that will flow into the paper. But a great tip also in doing this is don't look at your pen. Look at the spot where you want your line to finish and move your arm in a whole movement towards that spot. So our focus is here. It's not on where our pen happens to be. That's probably the most important technique in drawing a straight line. And this exercise is also very simple. Practice drawing squares. And not too small either. What this gives us practice in is starting and ending lines at specific points. We get practice in drawing a nice smooth straight line and it gives us practice in joining our lines with other lines to create nice clean corners and to avoid that sort of thing happening. And it also helps us work on our proportions, on judging with our eye whether this line is the same length as this line, which becomes more obvious once we've actually formed it into a square. As a further exercise, we can draw squares within the squares. This may show us exactly how accurate our square is, but it also gives us practice at drawing parallel lines quite close to each other, which is very common, of course, when we're drawing buildings. So drawing squares and squares within squares is a great way of developing our line technique. This next exercise may not seem as obvious. Draw two parallel lines and draw a line straight across the bottom. In all these, we also practice starting and ending our lines at precise points. Next, we draw a line that's not parallel to this one, it angles slightly up. And now we do another one above that, about the same distance, but we want to angle it slightly more. None of these lines are parallel, but that they always slightly increase in angle. We draw another line and we start by making this line horizontal across the bottom. Now we repeat this same fanning pattern down this way. And a little extra important tip, it's often easier to position our paper so that our line direction is the easiest direction for us to follow. I think these two lines are a little bit too close to being parallel. Why this is such a helpful exercise to do, because when we draw buildings in two point perspective, this is the effect that we get on different sides of the building. And learning to do this freehand is a huge improvement to the accuracy and the impact of our drawing. For this exercise, we draw a series of long rectangles. And then we draw a second set of lines to increase the thickness of the outside edge. Now you can see how I use that to improve the proportions. We do a vertical line down the middle. Now this first one, we want to divide this rectangle in half. And now we want to divide these halves into quarters. And then we can stop and say, do these all look as though they're the same? In the second rectangle, we want to divide it into three equal sections. And that's probably slightly more accurate. For this last one, we want to divide it into five equal sections. I do that, getting a, a centre section and then dividing what's left in two and looking to see if they look right. This exercise is tremendous practice for many of the windows we draw in grand architecture. We might draw half a dozen of each, one after the other, and then move on to the next one. We get used to dividing shapes into equal proportions as well as drawing the lines that do it. With this exercise, we start with a rectangle with one end missing. And what we want to do is place two parallel lines fairly close to the end. Now, whatever gap we've left there, we want to leave again. And now do another line the same distance from that first one. Whoop, that's better. Again, I want to repeat that gap. 
and get these two lines at the same distance. And I repeat that along. So that's the effect we're after. Another tip, if you're drawing with pen and can't erase a wrong line, always put the correct line in. It will be less obvious than leaving the incorrect line. This is the basic exercise, which can then be repeated with rectangles taller, longer, and also on a larger size or a smaller size. What this exercise prepares us for is line work connected with architecture where we have elements such as columns that are equally spaced as well as practice with our nice clean lines. This gives us practice in dividing spaces with this pattern of proportioning. For this next exercise, we angle our lines top and bottom. We start the same way, but we want to make this next space slightly narrower than the one we've drawn there. And we want to make this space slightly narrower. And now again, this space slightly narrower than this one and this one slightly narrower than that one. And this is the pattern we continue doing then. And this exercise is good practice for us with the decreasing proportions of foreshortening, such as we see in this building, where the columns become closer together and also narrower as the building slopes away from us. Once we've drawn this, we can give ourselves a little more practice in our line work. And here we can see that we're practicing for the sort of foreshortening that we get with windows in perspective. So we practice our line work in a way that trains us not just in nice, brisk, confident straight lines, but also in a way that gives us practice in some of the challenges of how we're going to use those lines to create our scenes. If you like, these exercises are the equivalent of a pianist playing scales, increasing our control over the basic elements of our art. Of course, we do these exercises so that we can create drawings, but they're a great skill to work on when we don't have the time, the energy, or perhaps the reference for a drawing, but we can invest that time into a good outcome for our next drawing. So have fun, I'll see you next time, bye.